Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, everybody. My name is Paula Kessel, and I'm an alcoholic. By God's grace, the program called Alcoholics Anonymous, I haven't had a drink since April the 11th of 1977, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I have a home group, and that's the West Connect group in Jacksonville, Florida. We meet at 8 o'clock on Monday nights, and if you're ever in Jacksonville, Florida, get Dave and I a call. And one of the things that's really neat is you don't need to have my phone number, just call the operator. When you've got sober a while, you can be in the phone book. So it's, you know, no big deal. Just give us a call. Uh, and I have a sponsor, and my sponsor has a sponsor, and I sponsor. So, uh, I am really excited this morning. And um, I'm supposed to talk on step 12, which is, I think, just absolutely amazing. I get to do that. I get to do step 12 because I truly believe that having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps that we carry this message to other alcoholics and we practice these principles in all our affairs. And I'm going to try to address all three of those things that that step says. And uh, But what I want to do first is uh, I just want to say that I don't know that, you know, one of the things that Bill says in his story is today I know usefulness. And I am so grateful that I know usefulness. And one of the things that has always been my passion since I got sober in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous is other women. I've always loved other women. Now, I know that I was a kind of a odd duck when I came to the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. But you see, I was a military wife. And I was married to a sack pilot. And these men are gone, and they're gone for years at a time. And so when I came to the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, I didn't know you were supposed to hate women. (laughs) I didn't know that. All I knew was women saved my life. Women were there both times when I had my babies. My husband wasn't there, but other military wives were there. When my babies were sick, other military wives were there. It was always women taking care of women. The men, you know, they came home, they stayed a while, and our relationship as an Air Force officer's wife was just like, you know, throw your, you know, throw your money on the dresser and go on back to your next duty station. I mean, that was about it. The real deal was women taking care of women. And so when I came into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, that's what I felt, was the energy of women. And, uh, I love the energy of women. And I don't know if you felt the magic this weekend, but I felt the magic. I felt the magic of women, of being with women. And I am so grateful. And uh, Lee got this idea to do this. And uh, I don't know why he called me, but I'm really glad he did. And uh, because I am just so excited about this conference. I'm so excited about this conference. And I feel exactly like what Anna said. I mean, I can't believe. I thought last year we we took it through the roof. And uh, I think we took it through the roof and further this year. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's two things that wouldn't have happened, that this couldn't happen. Then the very first thing is, is if you hadn't come. If you hadn't come, this wouldn't happen. 
the energy wouldn't be here had you not made the effort. And you know what? I take that seriously. Some of you have flown. Some of you have driven. But you know what happens is, and it all costs money. It all costs money. And you were willing to pay the money for your sobriety. And I just, none of this would happen. We wouldn't all be, give, you know, feeling like we're getting, you know, getting it through the veins, man, getting it through the veins. None of us would have that if, it, if you weren't here. And then the other thing is the speakers. If the speakers hadn't been here... You know, I know we shouldn't feel this way, but I'm telling you, if the speakers suck, so does the conference. <laughs> and we went to a great meeting, and uh, my home group was Monday night Seal Beach Speakers Meeting in Southern California. And if you live in Southern California, you can be so spoiled. Because you have a circuit speaker every Monday night. And you're very spoiled. And I'm telling you, if there's a speaker that the secretary gets and that speaker sucks, I'm here to tell you the secretary ain't going to hear the end of it for months. <laughs> Absolutely months. So I know that the speakers are important. And I don't believe I have ever heard better speakers. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, 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 ever heard better speakers. So, thank you. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! And, uh, I mean, I just, I'm just so grateful to the speakers. Now, one of the things that uh, I loved, and it's been talked about, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of start this with step 12, because I don't want to forget it. And one of the things that's really tough, that there's been a few of us up here this weekend that are, you know, we're a little aging. And if you don't take the thought and say it then, it's gone. <laughs> Never to return. Okay? So that's what happens. You know, it just, you know, that's what happens. But one of the things that I just want to tell you about, now I have, this is one of the things that's really fabulous. I haven't heard Georgia before, but Lee said, I heard this speaker named Georgia, and she's really good. And uh, I'm here to tell you, you're really good. <laughs> and... So I didn't know her story. So I'm going to include you in this thing I'm going to talk about. And because now I know something about you. But almost all the speakers that we had this weekend are people who have been here. And I'm telling you, getting here, doing what they do, has not the easiest thing going. Okay? Let's start with Patty O. Patty O suffers from COPD. Patty O, we picked her up at the airport, and she's carrying a seven pound oxygen thing. She has flown from Los Angeles bright and early, like five o'clock in the morning, because she lose three hours coming to the East Coast. She's left Los Angeles, gone through Dallas, and we pick her up at the airport, and they didn't have a wheelchair for her when she got off the airplane. So she has to walk to the baggage claim with a seven-pound oxygen. And we get her. She isn't complaining. She's laughing. She's cracking jokes. And I look at her, and I said, if I can get you a wheelchair, will you let me? And she said, I'm not proud. So we get her a wheelchair, and we get her, and she's from Southern California. It was a little hot and humid because it had been raining a little bit on Friday. 
and we get her and she's kind of hot and she's starting taking off her jacket and so what happens is is that we have to wait a while on the shuttle and then what happens is is a magic thing happened the next thing I know I look up here comes Janet then I look up and here comes Melina and then I look up and here comes Katie and all the girls from Texas and all of us just piled on that whole that shuttle all of us to get here total god shot now we get to this hotel 4:30 quarter to 5 Patty's going to speak Friday night She didn't say oh I think I'm too tired I don't know if I can make that meeting Oh I don't know about any of you, but I hear that all the time from bullshit. <laughs> just, just plain old BS. Then on the next speaker is going to talk is Michael. Michael's had like 25 surgeries, so she's you know there's nothing on her that works right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she gets up here, and she shares her experience, strength, and hope. And she's, you know, she's going to, she shows up. And then on the next morning, Donna gets up. And because Donna has a brain injury, she forgot a car wreck she had. So she hasn't had two car wrecks. She's had three car wrecks. <laughs> She said, I don't know if I ought to come. Sometimes I just can't remember what I'm supposed to say. Because, you know, it just, I just can't, you know, because of the brain injury, I just can't think. She says, what do you think I ought to do? I said, I think you ought to come. I don't think it's your business anyway. I think it's God's business. (laughs) Donna told you about, and oh, I want to say one more thing about Michael. Michael not only raises her grandchild, she takes care of an invalid daughter. I mean, this, you know, some of this stuff doesn't end, guys. So, I don't know about you, but when somebody calls me that I'm sponsoring and starts whining a little bit, especially if they're too tired to do something, I said, you know, you want to sit still just a minute, let me give you my schedule? So, you know, it doesn't work too good for women I sponsor. <laughs> so, forgot about that one. Then, Donna told you about losing her children. And she gets asked to speak in the desert. And maybe, was it a week after Tracy had died? It was one week, wasn't it? And she said, she had a commitment to do an AA talk. And she said, I can't go talk. I can't go talk. Tracy died. I said, oh, yes, you can. There's nothing in the world you need to do more, and there's nothing in the, more they need, in the world they need to hear more than that you show up no matter what. So. And Katie. Oh, my God, Katie. She's so cute, I can't stand it. (laughs) And she can talk that book and boogie all at the same time. And I love you, and it's amazing. And she suited up and showed up after her husband died. That's what we do. And maybe you didn't have the book that good then, but you were still doing the deal. Still doing the deal. And that's what that 12th step is all about, as we keep doing the deal. And Vivian took a tragedy, and uh, no other word for it, but that she killed her own child. And Michael made it real clear to her. I place myself in a position to be hurt. And usually if I place myself in a position to be hurt, I'm going to take somebody with me. That's what alcoholics do. 
we take somebody with us. But out of that has come, what year is this for, for Ladybug? 17 years later, we're doing Ladybug again. And Ladybug, <laughs> Ladybug came out of that, of that tragedy of Tina. That's why we go there, is because of Tina, for the ladybugs. And you know what? We go and people share their ladybug stories. You won't believe all the stuff about ladybug. How, you know, because of ladybug, this lady was going to, she was going to take a drink and it was sitting. These are true stories. She ordered a drink and she was brought to her. Her salad was brought to her. And laying on top of her salad was a ladybug. <laughs> and she'd heard about the ladybug. And she didn't take a drink. So you never know the ripple effect, the constant ripple effect. And Georgia, I didn't know you'd had back surgery. I didn't know you'd loved a man and helped him die. I didn't know that. And that you suited up and you showed up and you came to AA anyway. That's the deal. That's the deal. That's what we do here. That's what we do in Alcoholics Anonymous. We show up. No matter what, we show up. That's what we do. I had the privilege of weekend before last being in Laughlin, Nevada. And uh, I was at a, at a conference, and uh, I heard a man that I've known since the day he got sober, but I hadn't seen him for about 25 years. And uh, he spoke that weekend. And a lot of the California people may know him. A man by the name of Frank C., and Frank talked, and Frank has Parkinson's. And it's real obvious that he's got Parkinson's. And I mean, I've known Frank. I sponsored his wife, and then, you know, and I found out that she's sober now, and that's great. I sponsored his first wife. And, uh, and I had no idea. But when he got up to talk, he says, I have two fatal diseases. And he said, I promise you, Parkinson's is the least of my problem. Because I have a disease called alcoholism. I have a disease called alcoholism. And that disease is out to get me. As my husband always says, you know, my head is not my amigo. It's not my amigo. It is not my friend. My head is not my friend. So I better have a plan of action. And I better be able to ha take those steps and take that action no matter what. I need to do that. I've been blessed to be sponsored since I got sober. I've been blessed to be sponsored. I want to talk a little bit about sponsorship. A lot of people. You talked about Marilyn. A lot of people. You talked about Marty. A lot of people talked a lot about their sponsor. I had a few up here that I sponsor, so they talked a little bit about their sponsor. Uh, Marilyn's going to be here next year. <laughs> so you're going to get to see. Uh, hmm. But my first AA sponsor was a man. I came into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I, you know, I could have, you know, done a lot of differences. You know, especially you don't, you don't identify with the differences. I came into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. I didn't even know another alcoholic. I came into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was a loved only child. I don't know anything. I didn't know anything about the disease of alcoholism. I had no idea what it was. I mean, I'd seen the days of wine and roses and I'll cry tomorrow, but I knew nothing about the disease of alcoholism. I didn't even say the F word. And those who know me, I'm really good at it now. <laughs> I was very naive. And I started, I went through treatment. And I'm one of, you know, I'm one of those. So, and I'm 37 years sober, so I promise you they had treatment centers 37 years ago. I went through three of them. And I went through these treatment centers, and first, my first treatment center, well, I did that one twice, was a county detox. Now, these county, these county detoxes are pretty low-bottom drugs. 
and I'm going in there. I don't even know another alcoholic. I don't even know what I'm, you know, what's going to happen. And then we start sitting up till three o'clock in the morning, you know, and they tell war stories. Any of you have been to treatment? Go tell war stories. Oh my God, my jaw was hanging. I mean, these people had been to jail. <laughs> Some of them had been to prison. I mean, I was shocked. I had no idea. I had no idea how bad and how sick I was. The only thing is, is that I knew that I couldn't stay sober. Because if ever I sobered up, I knew what kind of mom I was. If I ever sobered up. I knew what I had done to my children. I knew that I had hurt my children and I had abused my children. And I had a really good sponsor. And my first AA sponsor said to me, and he, and I also had a lot of problems with God. Now, it's those of you who don't live in the South, I know a lot of times when I come to the South, it's always good, but a lot of you guys come from everywhere else. I was raised Southern Baptist. I'm a Texas girl, born and raised in Texas, right where they took the Bible belt and gave it an extra pull. <laughs> and... uh well, I'll tell you, there was a lot of those thou shalt nots. If you thought it, you've done it. You're going to burn in hell. I mean, woo. And boy, I'll tell you one thing they were saying is thou shalt not drink. And so I had a lot of problems with God. And what I end up doing is I get a man who got sober in Long Beach, California, had a sponsor by the name of Frank Honeycutt, and I'm in Texas. And I'm going to talk about a little brick road. You know, our history is nothing but little bricks. And if one of those bricks were out of place, none of us would be here. And each one of us has a little brick road. Each one of us has a little brick road. And if, that, if any of those bricks were out of place, we don't have what we have. And I had a little brick road. And what happened for me is this man 12-stepped me out of a motel in Euless, Texas. And he was the director of that detox center. And he brought me back into that detox center. And when he did, I thought, I can't live sober. How can I live sober? My daddy was in a hospital in Adeline dying of cancer. My husband was 100% disabled from the military. And he was dying in Fort Worth, Texas, in Hearst, Texas. And I, was mis and I was hurting my children on a daily basis and had been since they were little bitty kids. I had been abusing my children because I couldn't take care of them. I'm a woman who never should have been allowed to have her children because I abused them in every way. And I always say this because one of the things that somebody reminded me, the only abuse I did not do to my children was sexual abuse. But I ended up doing that sober by having affair after affair after affair in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. Did all that sober. And uh, he brought me back into that treatment center and I said, I can't, I can't stay sober. I can't live with this. It's too much guilt. And uh, I left that treatment center. I got a bottle of scotch and I got a bottle of Valium. And I checked into a motel. I don't believe that there's anybody in this room that doesn't have an angel in your life. Someone who leads us to the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I have such an angel. And she said she, and this woman didn't know anything about the disease of alcoholism, but she loved me. And she said that day something came over her. Today I know that was God working in my life through her. And she drove around and she found my car outside this motel. And I had just shut the door. It hadn't latched. And she found me there. And she called 911. And on April the 8th of 1977, I was pronounced dead on arrival in a hospital in Bedford, Texas. Now, when I came to, they had no problems in putting me on a 72-hour hole and hauling me to a psychiatric hospital. That's just what happened. I didn't have any choice about it. 
and I, I was taken to a psychiatric hospital for 72 hours, which was enough time for my husband to obtain a court order that court committed me to treatment. And I entered that treatment center on April the 11th of 1977. Now, when that happened, I could not think of one reason why God had spared my life. Not one reason. I even got cheated out of a, of a, you know, of a death experience. And one time, I think it was Michael that said it. I said, I just always feel like I was so cheated. I didn't have, you know, standing at the top of the room looking down on everybody and all of that stuff. I said, I didn't get to do that. And Michael says, well, it was because you were drunk. <laughs> And, but I had no idea. But you know, in Bill's story, he talks about, today, I know usefulness. See, we don't know. There's not a one of us in here that hasn't had that same story in a different way. That exact same story. Every single one of us. The big book of Alcoholics Anonymous talks about we can help when nobody else can. We can help. We can help when nobody else can. The most important thing I have, the most important thing I have is my story. That's it. That's my story. And that story is to be shared with another alcoholic. Because I promise you, if I go 12 steps, somebody in detox, and I start talking about the first step and the second step and the third step, he ain't going to know what I'm talking about. But if I sit down and I tell him my story, he's going to have that magic of identification. Of identification. And that's why it's one alcoholic sharing with another alcoholic. The most important thing I have is my story. Now, I haven't always liked my story. I didn't like that, you know, I was a child abuser. I had, a, I had an AA sponsor that was just like Michael. He looked straight at me and he said, Paula, you're a child abuser. He didn't give me water down AA and say, oh, you've harmed your children. He gave it to me straight. That's 12-step work. That's carrying this message to another alcoholic. I didn't know anything about God. I can't remember if it was you, Georgia, that said, but one of you. I'm like, it all runs together. Somebody said, just believe that I believe. Did Marilyn tell you that? Or Pat? Tracy, whatever, told you, just believe that I believe. And Frank looked at me one day and he said, Polly, just believe that I believe. He said, I'm a priest. And I didn't get God till I got sober and worked the steps in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And he says, you can borrow my God, because by the time we get through, you will have your own. And we talked about promises this weekend. There's promises in every single step. You don't have to wait. I mean, the ninth step are, the, I guess, the most popular. But that's all. They're, all. they're everywhere. Every single step has a promise. And that's what I think Katie said. That's the good news. You do all this work, you get the promise. That's what it's there for. It doesn't mean you go from here to here without going in between. And I'm going to talk about that dash. I think that's what happens sometimes in the steps. Do the step, we want the promise, we want to do the dash. And all the steps have a promise. And Frank took me through the steps. When I was three years sober, I heard a woman speak in Austin, Texas. And uh, her name was Dottie Harris. And I said, if I ever, ever live anywhere where that woman is, I will ask her to sponsor me. Because you see, she had that language of the heart that we're talking about, that we're all talking about this weekend. Because you see, that's the magic. What's happening here is not speakers. This is heart. Dr. Bob said it. He says this is where the heart speaks and the heart listens. 
This is about the heart. This is not about the letter of the law. This is about the spirit of the law. We got the directions, but it's nothing's going to happen without the spirit, without the love. We got to have the spirit. If not, it's just instructions. But see, when you sit down, one alcoholic with another alcoholic, and you share that experience, a magic happens. An absolute magic happens. And by some crazy phenomena, little coincidence, I choose to call God, Dave and I ended up in Southern California. He took a job in Southern California in 1980. And I called the central office and I found that lady. And uh, I called her up on the phone and I told her I, who I was and that I'd just moved to California and uh, I'd sure like to go to whatever meeting she goes to. And uh, she told me where I could find her and I went. And uh, after that meeting, I asked her, I said, will you be my sponsor? I've just, I've loved you since I was three years sober, but you don't know that. And see, she, she gave me a lesson right there that I never forgot. And she just looked at me and she said, honey, I'd just be delighted to sponsor you. She didn't know me from Adam. But see, she had a program that said, you say yes. And you know, I believe in saying yes. You know, sometimes maybe I can't even take on a person. I've got so many sponsees, especially if they're brand spanking new, because I feel like they need a lot of time. And sometimes I don't have that to give, but I don't say no. I take them, and then I say, you know something, sweetheart? We have a little chat. You may be more interested in her, because she's going to be around and I sponsor her, and as long as I'm sponsoring her, you got access to me. So you know what? This is a family deal. It's just that Mama's going to be out working, and your big sister's going to take care of you. <laughs> but you don't say no. Can you imagine how hard it is for a newcomer to walk up to somebody and ask them to sponsor them, and they say, I'm so sorry. I'm too busy. I have too many sponsees. I don't know how you are as an alcoholic, but I'm not sure that kind of rejection I'd have ever come back. I don't know if I'd have ever come back. And they say that this is a program of help. And you know what I just, I loved what Patty said last night. Just be kind. That's all. I just want to know that these people are kind. That's, I remember Don Pritz. I got to hear him right before he died. And Don said, look, we've been beat up enough. Just be kind. Just be kind. If you can't do it, work with it later. But don't say no. Don't say no. And one of the things I've learned, which is a spiritual thing, the universe always says yes. You know, if I say no, I get a negative right there. Yes. God loves me. Yes. If you think I'm a piece of crap and you say that, the universe says yes. That's why we keep saying good things. And this lady sponsored me for 32 years. And on May 4th, this lady died. And today, in Southern California, at 2 o'clock, there's a memorial for her. Now, I'm not going to be able to be at that memorial, but by God's grace, I was in California the day after she died, and I got to be for her funeral service. I got to be there. 
And I got to celebrate her life. And that preacher that talked that day was talking about the dash. Because you see, we're going to have a born and we're going to have a day with the day we died. And what did we do in the dash? What did I do in the dash? And that's like the step. I can't have, I'm going to, I can't be reborn in this program, which is a promise that I am going to be reborn unless I do the dash. Unless I do the work. And then I get the promise. Three years ago, I was invited to Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I don't know anything's going to happen. I don't know that anything, you know, I'm going to Ohio. And first of all, those of you who know me, because I did a huge screw up Friday, you know, with the, with the schedule. Some of you got the wrong schedule. I ended up sitting out here Friday night going word by word with my husband and to take down a new schedule that he was going to email to Laura, the event director, so I could take it to Staples early Friday morning to have it copied. And then lo and behold, the old one still got out. But, you know, talk about screw-ups. And I had a sponsor. You know one of the things Dolly's used to tell me? If you're not making a lot of mistakes, you're not doing enough. <laughs> and then I get to find out, because I have a voice that carries through three counties. I don't need this mic. I have this voice that carries through four, three counties. And somebody asks, you know, what's going on? Why are you so nervous? What's happening? And I said, in the lobby, very loudly, I effed up. <laughs> so, you know, and then somebody comes in, boy, you heard that all over the lobby. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> boy, that's a good example of that, way. Anyway, I got this lady, and I met this lady. Um, I was invited to Columbus, Ohio, to do a big book study, me and Bob D. And, uh, I, and I screwed up that time because I was supposed to leave on Monday, and I had scheduled to leave Sunday night. And she said, well, you can't do that. We're having a party for the speakers and all. And I went, oops. And I said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. But being the woman she was, she says, I'll pay for half of it. And that was my screw up. I screwed up. I am so grateful that I did what I was supposed to do. Because I went to that party that night three years ago. Is it three years ago? Three years ago. And uh, by some coincidence, I sat by a lady. And... By some coincidence, we sat there about two hours, and we just talked and shared and did what women do at that party. And uh, I really liked her, and uh, we started meeting and joining up at conferences and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, when this thing happened to me. You know, it's just like when somebody dies and somebody's, re you know, and a baby's born. That some, when someone is taken and then someone else is there. And I knew without a doubt that I would have this woman be my sponsor. But I first talked to the woman who is now my sobriety sister. And I said, what do you think? And Janet said, well, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and uh, so now I'm Rena. Rena has Tommy. Tommy has over 50 years of sobriety, and she knew Bill Wilson. So I didn't know that that was going to happen. That's part of my little brick road. That's part of my little brick road. So I did not even have a chance to talk to Rena till yesterday. Dottie is having her final memorial today. And I got to talk to Rena yesterday. That was solidified before it was done. 
That's Alcoholics Anonymous. I believe part of step 12 is, is that I can't sponsor unless I'm sponsored. And I'm here to tell you that I had to have a spot. And, you know, and God gives you what, God has always given me what I needed. Has, and I didn't know that he was already working that out three years ago. I didn't know that. He knew that. I didn't know that. But you see, that's how God works in my life. I don't know that, see, he knows. I don't know what's out there. But God knows what's out there. And the spiritual awakening, I believe, is that I trust God. I, am, I have a God of my understanding. I know that God loves me. I know that God loves me. I came in here and I believe that all God wanted to do was punish me. But I take the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and I have a spiritual awakening. Am I spiritual every day? Oh, not hardly. Do I have sponsees that are willing to tell me that on, whenever it happens? Oh, yes. Because one of the things that I truly believe in is that we walk shoulder to shoulder. That's what we do here. I can remember my, I can remember Dottie. And I wasn't even that sober. This was in 1982. And she went through a terrible, terrible divorce in her life. And she was devastated. And she read me her inventory. And I'll hear, I'm here to tell you, I read a lot of inventory to people I sponsor. I'll read it to anybody who'll listen. And that's a 12th step. Practice these principles in all my affairs. You know, one of the things that my mother used to tell me is, Polly, there's absolutely no excuse for rudeness. I'm a southern girl. I was born in Texas. And uh, I always say I'm a southern girl. Now, Katie says she's, that Texas is not the south. And I kind of agree with that. Texas is Texas. And... Uh, <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, I've lived, I'm a military wife, I have lived all over the United States with him and with Dave. You don't ever put our address in ink. I mean, because we're going to move, probably. I hope we're done. We're really old now. But um, all I know is, is I'm a Texan. I am a Texan. That's all there is to it. My son graduated from the University of Texas at Arlington. I'm a Texan. I have been given that opportunity to work the steps and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And one of the things that we've heard this weekend is how to be a good daughter. I learned how to be a good daughter. I took care of my mom. My dad died. You want to, don't waste any time doing these steps. Don't waste time. My daddy died before I was a year sober. I am so grateful I got to make amends to him. Don't miss that. Don't miss it. Don't wait. I got to take care of my mom. But the greatest gift I got that I've had is I've got to make amends to my sons. Lots of people this weekend know my son. He's 30 years sober. And uh, he came into this program. We kind of grew up in this program together. And uh, they said, oh, I talked to James, and he says, give you a big hug. He's so proud of you, da, 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 da. And uh, I get to be a mom today. I get to be a grandma today. I am a mother who should never have been allowed to have her children. The only reason I didn't kill one of mine is I just didn't have the car wreck with them in the car. Not that I didn't have the car wreck. They just weren't in the car. Because we didn't use seat belts. 
kids stood up on the seat by the side of you. Lots of things. Lots of things. I get to do that today. I get to sponsor other women. I am a woman whose head came into this program behind three suicide attempts because I can't stand who I am. I don't like who I am. And let me tell you something. If I didn't have the opportunity to sponsor other, sponsor other women, I wouldn't like who I am today. Because you see, I'm somebody that cannot spend five minutes in this head. Because five minutes in this head is going to start off, I'm addicted to approval, is going to start off, they don't like me. I should have never gone to that movie anyway. <laughs> and all of that stuff. I'm a Bill Wilson. I become so depressed that I spin down, and it starts with the self-pity, and then it just starts spinning on down. I've been diagnosed manic depressive, you know, clinically depressed, depressed. If it's got a depressed thing, I've been diagnosed it. That's why I got to take a lot of fabulous pills all through the military until I got sober. Absolutely, I mean to tell you, great pills. They were all prescribed. I never paid a penny for them. But you see, I, was, I got them all from the military. It's really easy. You see a different doctor all the time. You have to go pick up your chart. They do, you know, not, it's not going to be in the doctor's door. So you go pick it up. You take it to the ladies' room. You tear off the first page, and you throw it in the toilet. Oh, boy, I really need those pills. Nobody taught me how to do that. We just learn. I mean, it's just instinct. Just instinct. And I get to practice these principles in all my affairs. I drove an L.A. freeway an hour and a half each way every day for 10 years to go to a job that I didn't like. I'm always, well, I don't like my job. I don't think they pay me enough. Oh, well, what do you like better? No money? <laughs> I went to a job I didn't like. But what it provided me that I didn't understand at that time was an 800 number. And I sponsored a lot of people, and I had a job that would allow me at times to talk on the phone. I didn't even realize that gift for a long time. So I didn't have, it was kind of before cell phones or that were as popular as they are now. And that job, I worked from 7 to 3.30. So I got on an L.A. freeway. I know I got one going to work at the crack of dawn, too, that goes, Carla goes to work at, I don't know, 5 in the morning? <laughs> yeah, 5 in the morning. I bet you're in a meeting that night. <laughs> See? So, so, the wires don't do real good in my, you know, for me. <laughs> and, uh, but what happened is, is that, you know, I worked that job and I retired when I was 63 years old. And you know what they do? They pay me Social Security now. It ain't a lot. Do you know what? I get to do what Katie does. I don't have a lot, but it's enough. And you know what happens is I get to do the thing I love the most. And that is I get to work with women 24-7. I don't need a lot. I sort of do that, in, you know, sitting in my house on the telephone. So it doesn't require, I don't need, you know, I don't need much to do that. I just need my husband to pay the cell bill. <laughs> so, doesn't take much. And I get to practice these principles in all my affairs. Do I always do that? No. You know, but I do the very best I can. I strive for perfection. And that's what the book says. We strive for perfection. So I try to do the very best I can. 
The 12th step is a ripple effect. Sitting here today, we had 566 women this weekend. Those women that were here are going to affect, we were just trying to do some calculations this morning, a minimum, a minimum, and it's probably going to be ten times that, a minimum of five people. Do you realize what the ripple effect is in this room this morning? It is huge. That's the ripple effect. And that's why the book says, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. Is there a sufficient substitute? Yes. It is the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And if you weren't here and it weren't fun, I wouldn't be here. But because you're here, and because it's fun, I had enough enthusiasm to go take those steps that look like that would kill me. And I didn't know that those 12 steps would be the thing that would breathe life into me. And the good news is, is that we just get to do it and do it and one of the things that somebody said to me one time, they came up to me, I never will forget this, and they said, I want a new experience. Would you take me through the steps? And I said, sweetheart, if you want to go through the steps and you want a new experience, go take somebody else through the steps. I'm going to tell you two Chuck C. things, and I'm going to sit down. One of the things that Chuck used to say, if, if you knew better, you'd do better. No point in judging what we're doing. Nobody's trying to hurt themselves here. They're just doing the best they can. Do people I know annoy the crap out of me? <laughs> Absolutely. And then I take a deep breath and I say, oh my God, they're doing the best they can. Because they're really trying to do good. I really believe that. They're really trying to do good. Even the guy's robbing the liquor store, he's just trying to feel better. You know, just trying to feel better. And the other one is, sit here and let us love you till you can love yourself. I tell you, I don't know if I've ever accomplished that. I don't know. Some days I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, God's, God loves me. I'm doing a pretty good job. And in five minutes, I'm back in the other place. I'd like to, to look at this from an entirely different angle, as Katie was talking about. And that angle is come in here and love you and get this program until you can love somebody else. So coming in here and loving yourself, the way I love myself is by doing something for somebody else. And then I get to know that wonderful line that Bill Wilson says, today I'm to know usefulness. Thank you. I hope you come back next year. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.